Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the third full week of October 19th until the 23rd, Monday to Friday. Retail low prints, imports, plus our Cumulus Spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a physical Switch game. This month we're giving away a choice of three games, but before that let's jump into this week's releases. Cadence of Hyrule leads the charge this week, or if you want to use its stupidly long title, Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda. This is a fantastic melding of the two franchises together in one of the most daring things Nintendo have done, giving away one of their biggest properties to an indie studio. Thankfully, this roguelike rhythm game turned out fantastic, and this physical release sees all of the DLC included, which is awesome. And this is Dane Wilkinson's Pick of the Week. Construction Simulator 2 and 3 is probably a load of old arse, but we will have to see. Uh, you have a double helping of arse in this pack as 2 and 3 are bundled together, with over 130 jobs to complete with every construction machine under the sun represented. It would have the potential to be a good one if it had the budget to match the ambition. Apologies if there are fans of these out there, but to me it just looks terrible. Not the concept, the concept is fine, just the execution. Asterix and Obelix Double XL Remastered is a remastered version of the first game in the Double XL series. We've already had remasters of the second and the, the brand new third game, and it seems Microids have gone backwards to eventually reach this one. I own the second game on the Switch, but have not played it. Apparently, they are semi-decent action games, and I'd be interested to know if anyone actually played these back in the day. I didn't know they existed until the Switch came along. Transformers Battlegrounds has probably got a lot of people excited. People love Transformers uh, and they've been home to some fairly, you know, half decent video games based on the franchise. Not all good, but some surprisingly decent ones. Hopefully we have a review in the works for this, but anyways, it looks like a strategy game similar to an XCOM or something, which is unusual for the franchise. You'd think they'd go full action, but gonna be interesting to see what it turns out like. Supermarket Shriek looks... I have no idea what's going on here. I actually thought this was a racing game, but actually, looking at it, it seems to have more of a vibe of an obstacle course type game, maybe? Driving around the place, avoiding stuff, opening doors, almost a bit of an adventure style, but in a shopping trolley. Uh, no idea what to make of it, could be good, from a decent publisher, but you know, when you make a game based on shopping trolley physics, <laughs> you can't be sure. Monstrum. Now, I actually thought this was a game related to Vaporum, which is on the Switch, uh, due to their similar name and the almost Art Deco styling of the title. But no, after research, it seems they have nothing to do with each other. Let me just read the blurb to you. Monstrum takes the traditional survival horror formula and remixes it completely with procedurally generated levels, permadeath, and AI-driven predators, ensuring that nowhere on its derelict cargo ship is ever truly safe. And looking at the Steam reviews, it's supposed quite good. Hopefully it looks and runs well on the Switch. It's been out digitally for a while on the Switch, so let us know if you've played it. Hunting Simulator 2 released last week apparently, totally missed this one, but yeah, this looks to be a fairly budgeted game, as they so often tend to be, but you know, I'm probably not the target audience for this one. Not really into guns, not really into hunting, but let me know if you are. Do these kind of games scratch that itch? I am curious, because there's just like so many of them. All right, low Prince. Well, I hinted, guys, and I'm sorry I couldn't tell you, but Red Art Games announced that Hardcore Mecha is getting a low Print release under them, and the pre-orders are open now on their website. I reviewed this last week for the channel in time for the digital release and the Japanese Asian physical. It's a fantastic game, really enjoyed it, but it did suffer from performance issues, which should be addressed over the coming weeks. It did sour my experience, but you know, hopefully it won't sour yours, as it really has potential to be one. One of the best. You can import this physically now from Asia if you fancy it and links are below, but if you want the European version then you can pre-order that from Red Art Games now. They plan on having this out before March 2021 at the very very latest and if you want to order this from them you can also get 10% off if you use the coupon code SWATCH10. Not an affiliate, so we don't earn anything. Just a little bonus I organized for you guys. S Watch 10 for 10% 10 off anything on their website. Only 2,800 copies available, so I would move fast. I think this has the chance to be their first sold out game. Anyways, Hardcore Mecha is Brent McLean's pick of the week. Mummy Demastered has returned from the dead. Yes, this is a delayed pre-order for the surprisingly good licensed Metroidvania. Limited room, we're going to put it for order like a few months ago. Indeed, a few of our executive producers chose it as their pick of the week. But at the last minute, it was delayed until now. Well, now is your chance to pick it up. And it's a fine, fine 
game. Highly underrated. There is a standard edition as well as a collector's edition, which includes a repro Super Nintendo cart that's non-functional, a soundtrack CD, and Super Nintendo box. You can even order a vinyl soundtrack separately. This is available to pre-order on October 23rd, and this is God of Resins and Ganicus's Pick of the Week. Now I did say that last week felt a bit empty for Low Prince and that's because I missed Root Double from Strictly Limited. This is part of their distribution line so at some point it's going to get a retail release probably before Strictly Limited. They have a standard edition with their own cover, 2,500 copies, a collector's edition which includes a hard box, soundtrack, art book, stickers, acrylic standee, posters, cards and mini shiki 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 whatever it is, I don't know. 3,000 of these. Uh, there's also a super duper collector's edition that includes a pillowcase, which apparently adds 40 euros to the price, uh, which I'm told is, you know, supposedly decent for this kind of pillowcase. I'm not sure what universe I'm living in these days. 999 of these available. Also, if you're a Vita fan, I just point out that this game is getting a low print run on that console from PlayAsia right at this very moment. They still have some units left, of which, of course, I pre ordered for myself. Alright, let's jump into the imports this week. Just remember that if any take your fancy and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and pinned comment. It'll support this little series especially. You guys are amazing. It really keeps this series' legs on, so thank you ever so much for using our links. Plus, in return, if you use our links, you can get 5% off your order if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV, and you can get 5% off your order and also support this series. Never Song and Pinstripe Double Pack is a double A-side release of atmospheric puzzle platformer games, both with a heavy narrative, both games made by one dude pretty much, which is impressive in itself. Anyways, I've talked about this quite a lot as it's been available for pre-order for like forever, but it's finally here and I'll probably be jumping on board since I reviewed Pinstripe and I need to, you know, put my money where my mouth is. These are lovely games, a bit short, but this comes in a nice mini collector's edition with some extra bonuses that you may want to pick up. You get three small posters, three drink coasters, a digital soundtrack and piano sheet music, hopefully for music relevant to the game and not like Candle in the Wind by Elton John for example. Pinstripe is supposed to get a lonely release in Europe but it's constantly being you know delayed so who knows what's going on there. And that's it for imports this week but oh boy let me tell you something that got me far more excited than it should have. Final Fantasy IX has been announced for a physical release in Asia this winter time with English. Oh baby, get this in my veins. Um, I'll also put a link down below for that. It's an absolute bad boy uh, if you want to pre-order. It, it may come westwards eventually as the Final Fantasy 7, 8 Twin Pack recently got announced for a European release. Uh, but you know, I'm definitely not waiting around for this Final Fantasy 9. No way. I'm getting this as soon as humanly possible. Okay, now I don't normally like to comment on Kickstarters due to the risks involved, but Limited Run have stuck their noses in again and snapped up an upcoming Metroidvania style game, Romancelvania. This is a tongue-in-cheek game where a vampire goes on a dating game but ends up platforming and defeating monsters. I don't know, it's a bit weird. I don't know what to make of it. They're kind of trying too hard from the trailer. Uh, and the first line of the pitch says that it's a visually stunning game, which, you know, is debatable. But I guess it's early days. If you pledge 40 bucks, you can get a Switch physical. Wait, what? Sorry, I just need to call the lawyers or the Olivia Newton-John. Anyways, this is Jonathan Rumor's Pick of the Week. Right, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Community Spotlight where you show off your pickups. And if you're featured, then at the end of the month, you could be in with a chance to win a physical Switch game. And this month, you got one of three choices. You can choose Flashback, Tales of the Tiny Planet, or a legend in these parts, Helmet. You know I like obscure stuff. Right, firstly, me. Swinging back to Red Art Games, they have Hardcore Mecha as their recent release, but let's take a look at another of their releases, one of my favorites, one of their earlier releases, Zeo Drifter. This is a short, sweet Metroidvania from Atori who are well loved in indie circles. This is nicely done, perfectly compact with little to no filler. Really nice pixel art and music. It's, you know, an easily recommend game and nice to have it physically on the Switch. If you're into Metroid and want, you know, a very, like, nice miniature version, then look no further than here. As stated, this is available on Red Art Games' website, redartgames.com, where you can get a nice 10% off anything with the code SWATCH10. Not an affiliate, we don't earn anything, just a bonus for you. Or if you're putting in an order on Play Asia, you can get it over there too, with our 5% discount code, SWITCHWATCHTV, which is an affiliate and does support us. 
It's worth noting that the sleeve art is in French, but the game plays in English. All right, on to you lot. Rick Kralbert sent in this photo of some Mario goodness plus Dandara and Dragon Quest Builders 2. At the time of writing, Super still have a tiny bit of Dandara left in stock. So if you're on the fence, you may want to head over to their website right now. There's only like 2% off as I'm writing this on Sunday. Michael Vilchewski also got in Dandara along with other Super Rare goodness plus some fun games, Super Trench Attack, Aladdin, Action Squad from Street Limited, just good stuff. Crit Cat who won Super Trench Attack, it's on its way by the way, sent in this photo of Minecraft Dungeons, a Diablo-like dungeon crawler that's best suited to a younger audience. Visipon got in her culture once again with the fine Moro Crystal H and the slightly dubious but kind of irresistible Dead or Alive Extreme 3. I wasn't particularly kind in my review, but I still kind of want it physically with this import exclusive. Adam Karaskilo sent in a tough but fun platformer in Umihara Kawase Fresh. It may look cute, but it also may make you throw your controller out of the window. Lars sent in this nice photo of the Animal Crossing that they picked up. How many people still playing this one? Life kind of got in the way for me after like 100 hours or so. I miss catching the fish and the bugs. Transient Image uh, didn't have anything Switch related, but did pick up the PlayStation Vita, which is still a lovely console, and I do still buy games for it from time to time. Certified picked up Untitled Goose Game, uh, which seemed to come with nice little bonuses. Well, I always appreciate that. Streaming on the Corner picked up these great indies for their collection. You don't see Nightmare Boy too often, game is half decent, and the packaging looks surprisingly great for this collector's edition. Severus picked up the Korean exclusive Steel Book for Xenoblade Chronicles, which looks absolutely superb. Adam Hay sent in a couple of games, adding to the culture with Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Mainly Joe got a bargain with Sushi Striker, plus got in limited runs Ease Origin. Poopykins also got in Mario with Ease Origin, as well as the funky looking Prini 1 and 2 collection, very nice indeed. Renato Fares, one of our YouTube members, got in this fantastic haul. Lovely to see Hardcore Mecha right there. I know a good few of you ordered through our affiliates, and I cannot thank you enough. It helps us out so much. Also, a brand new release in Power Rangers. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what name you want to be credited with, but I'm going to call you OB Shante. Uh, sent in this fine photo, including the absolutely gorgeous looking artist edition of Pode, which, you know, I don't often include affiliate imports for European exclusives, but you know, I've got to put this one down there in the description. It's just far more stunning than I ever thought possible. So I, I, I have a feeling some American people may want to import this one. What a top job they did with that. Fluttershout got in Senran Kagura Reflections from Limited Run. <laughs> no comment on that one. Marty Mar got in Prinny as well as Power Rangers, both very recent games. As did Captain Slow, looks like a popular one. Also, he is enjoying Journey to the Savage Planet, which looks pretty cool. Neverbirth got in these games, including the gorgeous steel book of Brigandine, right there at the top. Not exactly sure where they got it from, but I want it. And I don't even like steel books. Raven Knight picked up Lovecraft's Untold Stories, an obscure collector's edition in Europe, but can be found fairly cheap if you look in the right places. Has a nice soundtrack, which I always approve of. Not available in the US, I believe. Steven665, thank you very much for using our PlayAsia affiliates and code for some of these games. Hard West is another one similar to Untold Stories, only in Europe as a collector's edition. Brigandine there from Japan has English and looks gorgeous. Marcio Quintanero sent in these top class releases from Nintendo. I've been playing Galaxy again recently, and my god, it's just so amazing still. I'm surprised how well the motion controls have been translated to the Switch. Our resident visual novel expert, Marion, picked up this double pack of robotics notes, which looks great value as it does come with some nice little extras. Tyson barely sent in these games, some very recent ones at the bottom there, quality all around. Corey Graham picked up the Prinny set, showed it off, and also put together the little Lego style Prinny thing that you can get. Apparently, not the easiest thing in the world, just like the games themselves. Casey Carter sent in these games. Once again, some recent goodness. Kunai, for example, is a quality little Metroidvania style game. Juan really enjoyed that one in his review. Robert picked up a double helping of the Samurai Showdown collection, one from Pix and Love in Europe, and one from Japan, the collector's edition looking absolutely beastly. I should have mine on the way sometime soon.
Lord Vapor kind of followed suit with the Picks and Loves previous release in Samurai Showdown 2019, which is honestly one of my favorite pieces in the collection since it includes a bonus cartridge in Samurai Showdown 2 for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Alolan Jodo got in a hole from Limited Run this week with a wealth of gorgeous looking artwork. Roar and sitting in an eye dazzler after finding some irresistible bargains this week. Wow, man, what a haul. A good few that I need adding to my collection as well, like Alliance Alive, Paper Mario, Ukulele. Babble on Game sent in these two photos. Hey, is this the retail release of Sayonara Wild Hearts finally? Or is it the I Am 8-Bit one still? Hopefully it's the retail one. I'm tired of talking about it. Goma was happy to add Skullgirls to their collection, but also nice to see the two De Blob games there. Really nice, really cheap these days too. Highly recommended. Chris Hepburn picked up three games, including Ministry of Broadcast, the North American version with the Steel Book. Demix picked up some great stuff, including that Sonic Mania Collects Edition, going for very cheap. Wow. Rich Bergen got in some very recent games, including Remothered, the second game to hit the Switch. Plus, right there at the bottom right, Busted. Thanks, Sean. It's Rain Time, who got in this absolute beaut, the Moon Premium Edition. Sadly, this seems to be sold out at the minute. Mine's waiting to be sent out with a pre-order for another game. I can't wait to get it. N0 got in some belters, including Moro Crystal H, Collector's Edition from Play Asia. Graham M helped himself to two players worth of brand spanking new Mario Kart Live. Personally, I'm waiting for the Shy Guy version. Jonathan got in a couple of games this week, really tempted by Nine Monkeys of Shaolin. Uh, I'll probably get it at some point, although I've heard the demo on the eShop was pretty rough. Looks cool though. Our executive producer Ganaka sent in these games. I'm surprised by all these robotics, not because of the quality, I'm sure they're great, but visual novels are really niche and I'm, you know, I'm pleasantly surprised. That's the phrase, pleasantly surprised. Chuck Taylor's got an absolute monster this week. Wallet Buster with plenty of brand new releases mixed in with, you know, hoovering up some classic titles. The bottom games, all pretty much brand new. Absolutely mwah, gorgeous. Bruno Silva got in the fantastic Link's Awakening. Such a classic game. Love the art style for this one. Shikification got in some fine games to show off with a double helping of NIS America right there at the top. Still need to get those myself. Fallen Legion is especially cheap over here these days. Jean-Francois sent in an eye dazzler, some exquisite titles. Also many, many thanks for using our links and codes on Play Asia for some of them like the Atelier Trilogy. Pretty much essential for importers, even if the price ain't cheap. We really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. And finally, to end this show, we have V who showed off some buttes. Firstly, the game I was really sad to learn did not have English. I mistakenly said it was feudal Japanese in setting, but I was completely wrong on that looking back. Ghost Parade on the PS4, which unusually did not have English, even though the digital version does, at least on the Switch. And best of all, Moon and Hardcore Mecha together in one picture. What a fine picture and what a way to end the show. Absolutely stunning. All right, thanks, ladies and gents. It's always fantastic to see what you've got. Please send me your pictures on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or you can tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical, and I'll give you a nice little retweet. Or you can email it to us at contactors at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the email title with Community Spotlight so I don't miss that. And we have a Discord where you can send your pictures in there in the submission section. And you can also have a nice little chat with us in our very nice little community there. The links for that are below. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physical. Special thanks, as always, to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Ganicus and everybody who has subscribed to our memberships. We really appreciate you and you. Yes, you watching right now. If you watched all like 20 minutes of this video, you are, well, you're crazy. And you're also a legend because the longer you watch, honestly, the longer you watch, the more it helps us out. YouTube likes it when you watch longer, basically. So yeah, <laughs> maybe 20 minute long videos don't always help the channel, but you know, the longer you watch really helps. Thank you so much. Um, and here, here's some of our other content. You can also check out last week's episode in case you missed that. Uh, have, have a great week, guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.